Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be discussing the supported trajectory modes that Pumotic supports and what they basically do. And I wanted to not only cover this in theory, because again, I'm in the user's manual right here, and I'm going to just go over some brief examples of what this discusses, because many of you are going to be new to this. But I also wanted to show you live with a video of this of these actual uh, trajectory modes being performed in action. Because I feel once you see it, it'll give you a better understanding of not only seeing it in action, but also testing them on your own system to find out what trajectory mode best suits your application. So let's just take a brief look here. It says the Pumotic system supports several different driving modes along a given path. Each of the modes is a compromise between the execution speed of the G-code and the accuracy of the follow uh, a given trajectory. These processing modes are switched by the G-codes considered below. So you've got the option to use a G61, a G61.1, which is exact stop mode. Uh, and again, it's going to break them down here and define them. G61.1 is accurate movement with a stop after each line of G-code. This mode is the most accurate, but the movement is extremely inefficient. So basically what they're saying by it being extremely inefficient is it takes the most time. But again... Just like many things which are CNC robot, the more time you take, the more accurate and more precise your cuts are going to be. Then you've got the option to go G61, exactly, following the trajectory at the highest possible speed. It differs from the previous mode in that for each common mode of two, point, two adjacent G-code lines, the maximum allowable speed is calculated in advance, so the specified acceleration is not exceeded for any axis. So once again, we're kind of stepping it up a bit. We're not going to stop after each line of code. We're just going to continuously go through. But again, it's an exact mode, and you're going to be following that exact mode to actually uh, machine out whatever G-code you, you actually uh, place within the software. And then it gives you a brief example. For example, if the following code block is encountered in a unitary enterprise, and it's giving you these examples, the then the movement of 10 millimeters will be performed as a single unit since it's obvious that two segments can be performed as one. The speed graph for the execution of this G-code is shown in the figure below. So once again, we're getting into more theory here where we're, we can actually click on these examples, and it'll explode them. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. There we go. And you can see here, you've got your speed in millimeters a minute. And again, they went with the metric uh, measuring system for this to give you an idea of speed. And again, time it's going to take. And again, you can see the time here is it's kind of ridiculous as far as how fast it is. The software processes things very quickly. But again, they give you a full disclosed breakdown. Um, as you come down here, if in the example replace G61 with G61.1, then two movements will be performed separately with a stop at an intermediate point. So again, you're getting an idea, but again, we're still dealing with theory. And again, theory and seeing things like this, the graphs, they're really helpful to give you that theory, but I don't feel that they're as helpful as actually seeing this in action to give you a, a real display of exactly what these do. And again, we've got uh, consider a more complex case. Here at the point, it goes into full detail about this, and it gives you a graph for this example. Now we're going to discuss another mode, which is the G64 constant velocity with a given error. Okay, this is the default setting of Pumotics, and again, totally up to the end user to decide what application best suits their trajectory mode. And that's why, once again, giving you a definitive uh, example in live terms, in terms of a video showing you it on the machine, makes the most sense because you can play with these modes and see what best suits your application. When you enable this mode, you must specify a tolerance other than zero. For example, 0 0.1 millimeters, G64, P0.1. Setting the zero value is equivalent to the exact path mode G61. G64 is the fastest execution mode for G code. And again, the reason it's the fastest is because it has a given error. So again, it's going to process a little quicker, but again, you may have a deviation. And again, that deviation is going to be programmed in by what tolerance you want to have the, so the software stay within. When this mode is turned on, the system rounds the path in such a way that uh, the permissible deviation of the real two path from the path specified in the G code does not exceed the value of P. And again, the P is right here in the example. This avoids sharp corners and as a result, increases the permissible speed of the junction points of adjacent code lines. So 
Think about it as anti-aliasing. That's the way I was explained it, and it really does make sense. If you guys are familiar with video cards, it's basically a smoothing effect. Okay, now of course, there are times that this is not beneficial. I've actually had a client recently discuss a file that it actually rounded off an edge of his actual design causing a problem. We had to go over it, we analyzed it, and we figured it out that he'd be better off going with G61. And once we went back to G61, his file read perfectly. Again, the deviation effect and using these modes, and again, there are examples here, we can explode everything to see what the screen would look like and how these all actually break down. This is what is really up to the end user to determine based on their file type, based on the machine's performance. Overall, most of you will go most likely uh, in conjunction with G61. Um, G64 can also be used, but again, you'll proceed with caution because you are dealing with a co constant velocity with a given error, and that tolerance will determine if there's going to be arcing performed on a file instead of the file being cut in the exact format it was written. So, uh, but in the first case, the movement is performed G61 mode, and you see they're, they're breaking down more examples. So rather than go into all of this, because again, we're, we're dealing more with theory in this, um, I am going to put a link to this page. And again, this is in the online manual. It does break everything down. Once again, you can click on the examples, and you can see here how it's breaking it once again down, and it's, it's actually color coding this for... Uh, to allocate different axis movement and velocity vectors. But I'm going to now cut this out and now we'll go over to the live demonstration of these modes in action to give you an idea of what you can expect. And again, this is how we become sharper guys, um, really covering uh, all of these different types of feature sets. And believe you me, I'm just like you, I'm learning as well, that there are there is no direct answer of what is the best it's what's the best for your particular application like i said you will play with these settings and the idea that you even have access to these settings allows you to get the most out of this robot we want it to be the most accurate we want you to be happy with the speed set and again that's why i'm doing these videos i hope they all help so now i'm going to cut over to the other uh actual side of this video where it's going to cover the practical use of these in action Okay guys, this is the second portion of the video where we're going to see a live demonstration done on the different trajectory modes. I'm going to hit play and we'll discuss each one and again it gives you a direct visualization of what each one will do when you activate it in Pumotics. And once again, this is the exact stop mode, G61.1. You will see that after each G code is actually completed, you'll see a stop, and you'll see that present when uh, the, the actual robot's machining. Watch for it over here. You can see how it's breaking up each movement. Now we're going to do exact path G61. That's where it'll do the same motion, but it'll do it without the stop in between each G code line. So you'll see just a continuous motion. Okay, now we're going to do constant velocity G64, and this again is the anti-aliasing mode, where again we're looking more at rounded corners. Uh, the geometry is based uh, upon being completed on a tolerance level that you would input. So again, uh, pay close attention to this. You'll definitely see a definitive difference of the same geometry when this is active. <laughs> can really see it around the corners here, of course, compared to these where we have square edges. We're looking at more of a, a round edge. So again, guys, I hope that this video has been helpful. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to complete the video by showing you how to set these settings inside of Pumotics 
based on what you just saw and based on, again, if you want to try all three to see what it exactly is going to uh, be derivative of what you actually produce with your system. Again, there are certain applications that you're better off going with a different trajectory mode, but overall, for most applications, G61 is going to be probably your sweet spot. So now what I'm going to do is step over to showing you exactly how we set these settings inside of Pumonix. Okay guys, in this portion of the video, I'm going to show you how to set your trajectory mode inside of Pumonix. You're going to come over to your Pumonix icon on your desktop. And again, I'm, as I'm waiting for the software to open, I will select the six axis screen set. And we'll go with the light version. And I'll click on OK. Now as we have the screen set actually loaded, um, what we are going to do is come over to configuration, go to settings. And what we want to do is come over to the G-Code tab. And then as we come over to the G-Code tab, you can see it says motion mode. And again, you've got your exact path. That's G61. G61.1, use exact stop motion mode or constant velocity. Once again, the software by default is in constant velocity mode. And again, you can adjust your tolerance level based on that mode. If we come up to exact path, again, you can see you're locked out of actually adjusting your tolerance mode. So again, very simple to do. If we were to go with exact path, G61, we would then click on apply. And it's letting me know that once again, I'm in the simulator mode. That's totally normal. It's giving me the warning for correct operation required that only one function is defined at each output. Device pins used for multiple functions, SIM pin 11, SIM pin 12, and SIM pin 13. Totally normal. Click OK and then click OK. And once again, you get the second, the, uh, second warning message. Everything there is all set and now you're in that mode. And a way to validate what motion uh, trajectory mode you're in is to come up here and you can see on the HUD you've got G61 present. If we were to change this to G61.1 or G64, you would see this present in this location letting you know what trajectory mode you're in. So again, guys, I hope that this video has been helpful. I know videos always add more questions, uh, sometimes more than answers, actually. Uh, but I've been getting a lot of positive feedback from the Pumotix videos, and I really do hope uh, many of you are getting help from these. Um, I plan on doing many more. I've got a lot of new products coming in from PureLogic that are really going to be exciting. Um, they offer things that I've never seen before, and if I know if I've never seen them, most of you haven't as well. Um, but again, if you do have any questions, comments, require of uh, quotes or consultations, please message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me through my eBay store, eDealers Direct. You'll see links in the beginning of the video and at the end. Thank you all for your support. Take care.